Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go and examine strings in a little more detail. Strings have a special property. Uh, this property is that they are immutable. And like the word suggests, mutable means change. Immutable means cannot be changed. Now, what does this actually mean? Because we know we can change strings. It refers to more what's going on behind the scenes in memory. Now, strings are also special in that there's two ways to create these types of variables. Um, you'll see the two ways on the screen right here. You can do what's called making a string literal, just like that, or you can make a string by doing the new keyword, like that. So we're going to take a look at the difference and what happens behind the scenes. So let's look at the first part here. Making a string like this, where you just name the string, put an equal sign and put some text in between quotes, does something called making a string literal. These strings are placed in a special spot in memory. I've heard it coined before, the string constant pool. And what it does is it writes the word high in there. And so what ends up happening is something that looks a little bit like this. So there's our string literal pool in this area over here, and the word high has been placed. Now what also happens is this string variable, word one, is a reference type variable. But it's a little special and what happens is, is it's now going to be storing a memory address, add 123, and that one add to three points to this word high. And so that's how you get to the word high. Now you'll see on our second line, we did this. We said string word two equals i. Now this is another string literal, and we purposely set it to the same value to show something here. When you make a string literal, and it's equal to a string that already exists, what Java Virtual Machine does is it looks in the string constant pool and sees if it can find that string. And if it does, it's just going to make word two reference the same spot in memory in that string pool. And so what we get over here is we would get, yes, the word high is already there. And so it would end up also adding the same memory address. And our little arrows would say, do that, which also points to high. And so they both point to the word high. Now, the idea that strings are immutable is what's going to demonstrate a big difference than what you've seen in another video about objects that point to the same spot in memory. Let's see what happens when we try to change this string. So we'll see here in our code that right now, if I actually printed out word one equals equals word two, and remember this is comparing memory addresses because these are reference type variables, this is going to print out true. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little change. I'm going to say, hey, word one, set yourself equal to yourself plus PPY. Okay, I'm trying to form the word HIP. Now, what a lot of beginners might think, which would make sense, is it just goes to, hey, word one, that's a spot in memory. Go over there, just add PPY onto the end. But this isn't what happens. In Java, it is set that strings are immutable. They cannot be changed, and it's referring to this string here in the literal pool, cannot be changed and added on or modified. What it actually has to do, it actually has to make a new string in memory, and then word one is no longer going to point to high. It's going to point to hippie. So what ends up happening is word one can't point to high. So let's take away that memory address of one, two, three. I'll make up another memory address. Maybe this is memory address four, five, six. And in terms of our little arrow there, well, we know that that arrow has to be erased. It's not going to point over there anymore. Now it's going to point down here to the hippie word. And so whenever you use word one now, it's now pointing the hippie. Now you'll notice word two, still left, right? No change there, we didn't do anything. It's still left pointing to the word high at memory address one, two, three. 
So this is what happens with string literals. No matter how many times you change the string, it's going to make new strings in the string constant pool and then change the address that the variable refers to. And that's the immutable. You cannot change a string that's already made. It always goes and makes a new one. Okay, so that's string literals. Now, what about the other types of strings we work with? So let's take a look here what happens when you create strings with the new keyword. Now the first thing you have to know is that when it makes a string, it is not making a string literal. So when we go to our visual and we make word three and word four with the words ball, what happens is this string constant pool here, we're not going to be making it in there. What happens is we get the word ball and ball made, and each of those strings gets assigned the memory address to point to the right word. So when we actually look at it here, it'll look something like this. Word 3 stores the memory address. That points to ball. And word 4 points to a memory address. That gets you to that word ball. Remember with a new keyword, new means new. You get a new one in memory. So you get two different ones, even though they're equal. And so that's the basics there. Now just to show that it is a different spot in memory, I'm at a little secret line of code here. I'm actually going to make string word 5 equals ball. Now this is a string literal. It's going to check the literal list to see if there's another ball. You'll see here right afterwards, I'm seeing if word 3 equals word 5. So when I go to my picture here, what ends up happening is it makes another ball. But this time it's a string literal. It makes it in there. There wasn't a ball in memory before in the string uh, pool. And so it makes it there. And then it makes word 5, which I have way up there. Let's just drag this down. And word 5 will have a memory address. And that memory address for word 5 is that memory address which ends up pointing do, 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 to that word ball in the string literal pool. Notice some of you might have thought, well, the word ball already exists in memory, but it's not in the constant pool here. And so it doesn't go and point to one of the ball strings that's already there. And so that's sort of the basic of what goes on. Now, that may seem a little confusing because, I mean, it's one type of variable but it does two different things because there's two different ways you can make the string object, right? Now we have string literals, which might duplicate memory addresses, making that printout true. Or what you may have is you may have making objects with the new keyword. And then when you go to check their memory addresses, that should definitely be false. One interesting note here is, is that word three and word four once you make them with the new keyword, if you end up doing something like this with them later, they become string literals again because you didn't use the new keyword here. So ABC, ABC, if you're going to check their memory addresses, guess what? These ABCs would be made up here in the string constant pool and they would both point to the same ABC that you'd only find once. So this should print true. When you run this file here and you actually see the output of the memory addresses, you'll see here that is true at the bottom. This one just above was false. And this one up here, that one was also false, which sort of agrees with the whole logic of how this stuff has been set up. Why do they make strings so complicated? Um, we'll tell you another time. Uh, but those are the rules with string literals and string objects and how they operate with their memory addresses. Thanks for watching. You may have to give that one a second watch to make sure you totally get it. Or just write in a file some stuff like this and test it out and see what these print out when you check on the memory addresses.